What's up Street Trucks Nation? We're prepping Bays of the Blazer for some road trips we have planned this summer. To get you up to date where we're at, we did the door glass, we rebuilt the vent windows, we put in new seat belts from Retro Belt, and we put in a new radiator from Champion Radiators. Next up, we're gonna do brakes today, and then hopefully, before we go to Battle in Bama, we're gonna be putting in some sound deadener and new carpet. This is just gonna be a stock brake job. We're not doing a big brake kit or anything like that just yet. I want to make sure I'm doing everything I can to make sure this truck makes it to Battle in Bama and Southeastern Truck National. Don't scratch the mags, bro. There's so much shit in the way. It just got started. Before we get started, I just want to point out that this is a driver. This is not a show truck. We road trip this truck, so none of this is painted. This is all just road grime and grit and grease just built up over the years. And I intend to keep it that way for a little while because I don't want to worry about keeping the undercarriage clean because we drive this truck. So today we're just focusing on the brakes. And also check out that Beltec suspension. So that actually makes for a pretty smooth ride even with 22s. So if you're looking to lower or lift your truck, definitely check out Beltec. All right guys, getting this caliper off is pretty simple. You take out these two bolts and this whole assembly will slide right off. All right, now the caliper's out of the way, you wanna go ahead and knock off this dust cover. And carefully remove this cotter pin. These castle nuts should not be tied at all, so it should come right off. So now this should just come right off the spindle. When you pull the spindle, you want to inspect this shaft for anywhere. This one looks pretty good. So once you get a rotor out, there's a seal right here. Uh, you pop this seal out and we can pull out that bearing. Sneak it in there and then start turning it and it'll come right out. And then here's that bearing. If you're gonna reuse your race, make sure you inspect it just to make sure there's no grooves or any, any uneven wear on the surface. This one looks really good, so we'll reuse this one. So this is a bearing packer. You could use one of these or you could literally just put the grease in your hand and pack it this way. But uh, since I have this handy, I'll go ahead and throw it in there. Take your seal here, carefully. Don't just start beating on it. Carefully tap it in place. All right, let's go throw it on the truck. All right, before we throw it on, I'm gonna hit the back of the rotor with some brake clean. Because I won't be able to get to it with a dust cover. Definitely wanna grease this too. And you wanna carefully install it. Gonna find our keyhole, throw in our washer, our castle nut. Now you don't want to tighten this up too much. You want it to spin freely with no play in the actual rotor. It feels good. All right, slide this back in so she don't back out. Throw in our dust cover. And the wheel bearings are done. The caliper, you wanna push this piston back in slowly. These pads had a little bit of life left in them, but I think it's time for a brake job. They're starting to crack and who knows how old they are. All right, I had to take the gloves off. I didn't wanna get grease all over our brake pads, but uh, on the inner brake pad, you wanna install this uh, anti-rattle clip with the part that protrudes facing towards the rotor. So this pad will slide in just like that and it'll hold it in place and then your outer pad slide in just like that.
right. So before I did the uh, before I did the wheel bearings, I would have some rocking back and forth. So if you if you take your wheel when it, when you jack the truck up and you rock it from on the top or the side, it could either be issues with some steering components or it could be issues with the wheel bearing. I also noticed when I was going about 80 when I was driving the speed limit, I would uh, when I would decelerate, I would I would feel just like a slight vibration. And uh, that slight vibration could be a wheel bearing issue. So I'm curious to see if I hop back on the interstate and drive the speed limit, if, uh, if I'll get that vibration. But this seems to be really tight. So I'm gonna hop on the other side, knock that out, and then we'll get on the back and start on the drums. I'm getting ready to start the drums, but before I do, I wanted to give you guys a tip. If you're not really familiar with drum brakes, they're a little more involved. So if you jack up the rear axle and take off both tires, work one side at a time, you can reference the other side for where the springs and clips go. So this rear axle was rebuilt in 2016, so I'm not gonna replace the wheel bearings, and we're just gonna do the shoes today. Instead of fighting this emergency brake cable, you can pop off this retainer clip, this bracket will come off, and then you can install it onto the new shoe. We gotta we gotta break in these brakes man <sighs> Oops. get that AC going all right let's go uh, so you gotta cycle the brakes a couple times get it broke in so we're going about 45 we'll slow it down to 20 okay but I was supposed to get uh, new drilled and slotted rotors that were gonna be super nice. And they didn't fit, so I was kind of bummed out. It's like, you know what, man, we're just trying to get this ready to go to Bama. I just gotta get this thing to stop because the pads that were on it and the shoes, I mean, they, uh, they needed to be replaced. So we'll just run it through a brake cycle a couple of times and we should be good. Well, that'll do it for this episode. Definitely gonna have to do a big brake upgrade kit. 
But for now, this will definitely get us to Bama and SCTN. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one and we'll definitely see you on the next one.